Let's say you're trying to combine data from multiple tables, but you have two problems. Problem number one is that you are handed off a PDF from which you have to grab the data. Second is that in that PDF, the columns are not even consistent through multiple tables. Well, what do you do? In this scenario, you can ask the person who gave you this data to f off and quit your job the very day. Hey, 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 don't quit your job. Don't say f off. We have Power Query to be able to handle this. Let's start. All right, before we start, let's just understand what is the problem that we are facing, and then we will lay out the logic as to the approach that we are following, and then start to solve the problem, of course, in Power Query. So I have this folder right here, and in the folder, I just have a single PDF at the moment, but there could be multiple PDFs right here. And if you just take a look at the preview of the PDF right here, you're gonna see that we have, of course, multiple pages, on the page, we have January dump for a company. That's the data for the month of January. There is some text summary as well underneath that. If you scroll over to the second page, you're going to see that we have similar data for the month of Feb and a couple of summary items underneath that. Now, if you closely take a look at the data, you're going to see that the columns are almost similar. They're not the same, but they're almost similar. For instance, if you take a look at the first column, we have date, the second column, we have person. But if you just go back and take a look at the first table for the month of Jan, we have date, but the person column just changed to sales rep column. Here we have an additional profit percentage column that seems to be missing from the second table right here. Now, as you scroll through multiple tables of this particular uh, PDF, you're gonna see that we have, of course, multiple pages, so three pages right here but the column names are not the same. They keep changing every now and then. And we have to make sure that we combine the data from all the PDFs together. For instance, all the date columns should be combined one underneath the other, all the sales, profit, even the sequence of the columns is not the same. So for instance, sales shows up right here as a second column, but then if you just take a look at right here, the sales column shows up and as an amount column right here. That's a problem. How do we actually solve this problem? All right, let's just go to the drawing board and start to create a structure in which we're going to solve the problem. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I just wanna read the core data of the PDF, which is nothing but the table. I wanna read the first table, then I wanna read the second table, and I wanna read the third table. These are my three tables, the first table, the second table, and the third table. Now, once I read the table, I would like to just get the names of the columns there are in all the three tables. So from these three tables, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make a query or a data set, which is going to contain, let's say, a column called columns, which is going to be nothing but all the columns pulled out from the three tables and presented right here. That is what I would want. Now, once I have got all the names of the columns, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, in Excel, start to define what name do I want to name them. So there is going to be a column called rename. And let's just say that we have a sales rep column, which is going to be mentioned right here. So sales rep, which is then going to be rename, renamed to, let's say, a person column. So I'm just gonna call this as a person column, so on and so forth. So the renames is going to be defined by the end user because Power Query cannot automatically decide what the names of the columns are going to be. But this is going to provide as a useful interface for anybody to rename the columns. Once we have this table, which tells me all the columns in the three PDFs or the tables, and what would I like to rename them as, then I'm gonna use this particular table to actually rename the columns of the three tables right here. So I will pick up the first table, the second table, and the third table, all the columns there are in that particular table. I will use this table to rename all the columns. So this is gonna be my first table, my second table, and my third table. And once all the names of the columns are consistent throughout the three tables, I can just simply append the data from multiple tables right here. Now, you could be playing with one PDF with multiple pages or multiple PDFs with multiple pages. It doesn't really make a difference. Once you've understood the setup of this particular query, you should be able to replicate that into your own data as well. Alongside, we'll be writing a couple of M functions and it's gonna be fun. With that structure ahead and the logic built out, Let's start building our query. Before we proceed any further, I'd like to give a big shout out right at the start of the video about my M course in Power Query. These are the very kind of problems, even more difficult than this, 
is something that we will solve in the M course. If you're interested to build your knowledge and your skills to the next level beyond the user interface of Power Query, understand the functions really well, take a look at the different problem solving approaches, understand the logic of solving the problem and then tackle your own solutions. My course is going to be extremely beneficial to you. At this time of this video, there are close to about 500 people who have enrolled into my courses. If you want to push ahead and master the M language at Power Query, I'll highly recommend that you please take a look at the courses. You shall enjoy a lot. Let's start with the video. All right, I'm in Excel and that's where we are going to begin our first query to get all the column names of the PDFs that we have. And I'm gonna go ahead and start to connect with, not with one PDF, but let's say a folder. So I'll go to data, I'll say get data from file from a folder. And that's the folder location that I have. Even if you don't see the PDF, that is all right. I'm gonna click on open and that is gonna give me a visual indication of all the PDFs that are there in that folder. At the moment, I just don't want to combine it. I don't want to load the data. I want to transform it and start working with the PDF. All right, with the Power Query window open, I can see that since there is just one PDF in that particular folder, I can see the name of that PDF with the PDF right here. If I just click on the side of the binary, I can take a look at the PDF file right here. Now, the way it works in Power Query, especially while you're dealing data with PDF, is that from the PDF, I am then able to get to the page level data. So you'll have a page level data. And then once you get to the page level data, then you can get to the actual data, which is there in the PDF. So remember this transition from the PDF, we'll get to the page level data. And from the page level data, we'll get to the data itself. So there's going to be a two level transition. Now, how do we actually get to this particular page level data is our next problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a PDF.tables function to be able to transform the binary and start reading the page level data. Well, how do I do that? I'm going to make a new step right here and I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say table.transform columns. In the table.transform columns function, the first part is what table are you trying to work with? So the table that I'm trying to work with is nothing but the source, which is in the previous step. Then it says, hey, what's your transformation? So my transformation is nothing but take this binary and apply the pdf.tables function. This binary is kept in the content column and that's how I would have to write it. So I have to write something like, hey, the transformation is going to be applied to a column called content and the transformation is nothing but pdf.tables. That's the function that I'm trying to apply. Now, once I write that, I click on OK, you're going to see PDF.tables, that's a plural. So once I click on OK, you're going to see that the binary that was there in the previous step in the next step has been transformed into a table and it doesn't give you the data as of yet. It gives you the page level data. That means how many pages are there in the PDF. So you can see that we have page number one, page number two, page number three, and there are also a couple of tables right here. From here on, we will now be able to get to the data of the PDF. The next logical step is to just click on the expand button right here, uncheck the name prefix, all the columns are good to go, doesn't matter, when we are okay with that. Now, if I just maybe scroll to the right of this particular table, you're gonna see that this is where the data lies. So this is all of the data of that particular page, and then we have a, then we have a table, so on and so forth. Let me actually give you a little difference between what we have here. So we have, you can see that we have pages here and we have tables right here. Now, whenever you are reading the data of the PDF, you're going to probably get two different kinds of data sets. One is the page level data. If I just take a look at the page level data, you're gonna see that not only do we get to see the data, but we also get to see the title. We also get to see the commentary at the bottom and all of all of that. If any of this information is important to you and you would like to be able to extract that information as well from the page which continues to read the table and the data on top of the bottom, you must go ahead and pick up working with the pages. But however, if you have a clean table on the PDF on the page and it just reads the data, so at the moment you can see that the table was being read, this is all the month of Jan data and if you scroll down, there is no junk right here. Then in that case, you can just try to work with the tables here. Now this will read as many tables as there are on page number one and this is going to be good to go. So for now, I just don't really wanna work with the pages right here, I just wanna work with the table. So I'll go to the kind column and apply a filter for the tables only. Click on okay and now we have the month of Jan all clean, month of Feb all clean, month of March all clean. The only problem at this moment is that the headers of this particular data are not promoted. They are actually in the first row, but they should be at the right position. Now, what do I do? The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna promote the headers of these three tables that I have. So promote headers right here for uh, table number one, table number two, and table number three. Well, how do I do that? I'm gonna use the table.promote headers function in this particular column called data. So let's just write a new function right here. So I'm just gonna create a new step and start to write my table.transform columns function. 
so table dot transform columns and I'm going to maybe say hey here is the table that I'm trying to work with which is nothing but in the previous tab and the transformation that I'd like to apply applies to this particular column which is the column called data and in this column I just want to promote the headers of the three tables so I'll say something like hey the column that I'm trying to work with is nothing but the data column and in the data column I just want to promote the headers so I'll use the table dot promote headers function and that is going to be good to go so close the bracket press enter and if you just now take a look at this the headers of the first table the second table and the third table are promoted now what I'd like to be able to do is that I just don't really want the data of any of these tables I am just interested in pulling out the headers of the table well how do I do that I'm just going to combine the data of the tables the three uh, tables right here and just get the headers from there so in the next step I'm just gonna say that hey I just wanna say table dot combine so table dot combine I have three tables to combine they are right here in the data column so custom one happens to be the name of the previous step uh, and data happens to be the name of the column which is where the three tables are so I will just use the data right here close the bracket and press enter the three tables get combined but however I get all the possible columns from all the three tables so you can see that in the month of Jan 2005 we had um, sales rep column but in the month of Feb there was no sales rep column so this happens to be a blank and you would probably have let's say a person column in uh, 2005 the month of Feb right here so that appears to be full but I'm not interested in this kind of data this is junk data at the moment I have to structure it I'm only interested in the all the column headers that I have so I can wrap this function around table dot column names just to get the names of the columns from the tables that have been combined once I do that I get the list of all the possible columns from the three tables that I have once you have the names of the columns all that you're left to do is go to the home tab click on close and load load this data in Excel and in Excel what we're going to do is we're going to create one additional column right next to this and we're going to start to rename our columns all right from here on I have provided a rename to every single column that was there in the table in that PDF so take a look I have created one additional column to this particular table that was loaded through Power Query which is the renames column and this is blue because all of these columns are hard-coded there is no formula so date column if found in the table should be renamed to date sales rep should be renamed to person cust should be renamed to customer so on and so forth you're also going to see that I have left two columns empty right here. This is the indication that I don't really want to have these columns when the final data is being consolidated. Every column which has a rename is the only column that I would want to see with these renames applied to the tables. Now let's just go back, load this table into Power Query and start to consolidate our data in the right way. So I'm going to click on this particular table, go to the data tab and say from table range and this table is going to get loaded. I'm also going to rename this particular query to not calls to but let's just say my, this is my renames and press enter. Now one thing that I would want to do right away is that since I do not want to have profit percentage and rename region column to be consolidated in the data nor to be renamed nor to be pulled from the PDF tables I will just apply a filter to the renames and say hey in case you have left something out just remove the empty and you're only working with the right set of columns that you would want to see now let's just go back to this particular query called columns and let's just start to work with this query now as of now if you take a look at the query we have done quite a bit in this query that we can reuse if you take a look we have connected to the source data which is our folder then we converted the binary into a table then expanded the columns then filtered the rows to only contain the tables we promoted the headers and these are the three tables that we have to work with now at the moment if you just take a look at our renames query this is the renames query that I would want to use these renames to rename the columns in this table to rename the columns in the second table and to rename the columns in the third table so all of these steps are absolutely crucial for me to reuse it once again however the problem is that in the next step I just pull apart the column names and this query gets converted into a list so how do I reuse all of these steps is something that I'm going to teach you so what I'm going to do is in the last step uh, right here after the formula ends I'm going to start to write a meta keyword and the meta keyword is going to pull the data of the previous step you'll see and you'll understand that once I do it so I'm going to go ahead and start to write meta and in the meta I will declare a square bracket and I'm going to say that hey I'm just trying to pull up a step 
So I'm just going to give a column name. So step, this column name could be anything, doesn't matter. I've just called it step. And which step do I want to use as a new query? The step that I want to use as a new query is promoted headers because all up until here is something valid that I have done that I want to reuse. So I'm going to go ahead and just say promoted headers. Once I have done that, nothing changes. You still have a list. Everything still just works fine. But now I'm going to create a new query and I'm going to reference the, that query to the columns query. So I'll say new query, other sources and a blank query. A new query gets created. Let's just call this query as combined data. And I am going to reference this query to the columns query. And as soon as I press enter, I get the last step. So this is the last step of the query. This is the last step that get loaded in this particular query. However, the step that I want to load in this query is not the last step, but the second last step. And note that the value of the second last step is stored in this meta step name promoted headers. So how do I reach out to that? So I'm going to go back right here and instead of referring to the query as a naked query, I'm going to use the value dot meta data keyword. So value dot meta data. And I'm going to say, hey, this particular query that I have, which is the calls, in the last step of this query, I wrote a metadata. Please give me access to that metadata. I don't have interest in the calls. Once I do that, you can see that you get the access to that particular step. And that's the second last step that we had it, which is where this is the table that I would want to work with. So now I'm going to pull that step apart right here. So I'm just going to maybe start the square bracket and say STEP press enter and this is going to load the second last step of the query. This is so awesome. All right. So now now, once I have the three tables that I kind of want to work with, now here is what I will do. At the moment, I do not know that what should I do with these three tables so that all the column names get renamed as per this particular table right here. So let's just kind of take help from the user interface and get some hint with that. So let's just say that in this particular query, I'm just going to go ahead and rename the name one column and call this as, let's say, hello. Doesn't matter. And the kind column as Hi, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start to take a look at my formula. Now, if you take a look at the formula, the formula says table dot rename columns. The first part is nothing but the table, which is right here. That's okay. And then it uses list of a list structure. So you can see that here we have a list right here. And in the list, we have the old name and the new name, which is nothing but right here. Then we have another list. We have the old name and the new name, which is right here. So that's the kind of structure that we need to produce. We need to have a list. And inside of the list, we need to have many smaller lists right here. Every single smaller list is going to have two parts. It's going to have the old column name, and then it's going to have the new column name as well. All right. With that being said, let's just go ahead and start to work with our renames query. Because at the moment, this is a table, and I do not really want this as a table. I would want this as a list of a list. So I'm going to go ahead and start to write a formula. In the formula, I'm going to say something like table dot two rows. And I'll also explain you the meaning of this function table or two rows, start the bracket, close the bracket in the end. I'm just trying to say that, hey, here is list number one, here is list number two, here is list number three, so on and so forth. So I'm just saying that, hey, I'm going to give you a table to work with and all the rows should be converted into a list. That's the table dot two rows function. And once I press enter, you can see that you have a list of a list structure, you have an outside list and you have smaller lists inside of that. Every single list is going to have two parts. It's going to have the old name and the new name, old name and the new name, so on and so forth. Now, this is the perfect setup for me to go ahead and start working with the formula. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use this particular formula. So I'm just going to copy that formula as a resource and delete that particular step. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start to use that formula that I just copied in here, referring to the renames query. How do I do all of that? It's easy. Take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and start to create a new step right here. And I'm going to use again the table dot transform columns function. So table dot transform columns. The first part of the table dot transform columns function is what table are you trying to work with? So I'm trying to work with in this particular table. Now, the transformation that I would like to apply is going to be applied to this particular column called the data column right here. There is a data column right here. And in the data column, I have three tables and I'd like to rename those tables. So I'm going to say it something like this. I'm going to say, hey, the column name is data. OK, and the transformation that I would like to apply is this, which is nothing but the formula that I copied. Now, the only thing here is that 
Now, the reference to the source step is not going to be correct because the reference that I would want to make is this particular table, which is right here. I want to reference this table, then I want to rename this table, then I want to rename this table. So here, instead of writing source, I'm going to write the underscore, and that is going to mean that I'm trying to refer to each row of that particular column called data. Now, I'm going to say that, hey, I don't really have this manual list. I rather have the renames right here, and that's one part of it. And then I'm going to also use the missing field parameter and I'm going to say just in case, just in case if you're not able to find any column that you would like to rename, please use the missing field dot ignore and ignore that column altogether. That's all about it. Close the bracket, press enter. And what I get is again a table. But the difference between this table in this step and the previous table is that here the columns are not renamed. You can see that this is still a customer. This is still a sales rep. However, this should be a customer and a person. If you just go to the new step and take a look right here, this is a person and this is a customer. That renaming is done. Now, if you just take a look, the renaming is consistent throughout all the columns. The only thing at the moment that we are lacking is that we do not really want to have the columns that we don't really want to pull out. So if you take a look, region is one column that I do not really want. I just want to cancel that column once I combine the data. And here as well, we have a profit percentage column. I do not want to have that once I combine the data because that is not something that we decided to have in the renames query. All right, the final part of this is that how do we restrict this table to only contain the columns that we would want? I'm just going to go back to the renames query. And if you take a look at this particular uh, list right here, and if I just maybe go to the previous step, these are the columns that I would need, which is going to be, let's say, obviously unique. So I don't really want to have person and person together. So I just want to have this particular renames to be considered to be pulled out from this particular table. So what I'm going to do is because you kind of convert this into a list of a list structure and every single list is going to have two parts. So the old column name and the new column name. And then again, the old column name and the new column name. So from this particular list, I want to have every single list and the second item of that particular list. That's the list that I would want and I can use that. So let's just go ahead and start to create one more step. So I'm just going to call this as columns that I would like to use columns to expand and click on OK. And I'm just going to reference that to the renames query right here. Press enter. And that is going to give me this particular list. Now from this list, I don't want like a list of a list structure. I just want to pull out the second item. And how can I do that? I can just say something like list.transform. Hey, here is the list that I'm trying to work with. From this list, please go in every single item of the list. And from the every single item, just pull out, let's say, the second item, which is going to be numbered as one. That's all about it. Put in a, a space right here, close the bracket and press enter. Once we have the columns that I would like to expand, obviously I would like to remove the duplicates as well. So I don't want these duplicates and I can just go ahead and say something like um, uh, list dot distinct and I'm just going to remove the duplicates and that's the list that I would want to kind of work with. That is pretty awesome. Now I'm going to go back and create one more step and then I'm going to say, hey, here are all the tables that I would like to use. These are all the tables that I'd like to use, which I'd like to expand. And here are the columns that I would like to expand. Please use, use these two and expand the tables. So I'm going to call this as expand. And I'm going to say, hey, I have table.combine function. So table.combine. I'm going to go ahead, start the bracket, and I'm going to reference this to the renamed query. So renamed. And in the renamed query, the column that contains the tables is the data and I'm going to press enter. Now this gives me all the columns, which also contains, let's say the profit percentage column and the region column and all of all of that. But I don't really want to have that. So in the table.combine function, I'm going to now specify that, hey, I have a list of columns, which are nothing but columns to expand. I'm just going to maybe use that, close the bracket and press enter. Now we're only working with the columns which are present in the renames query. That is pretty damn awesome. The last thing, the last thing to left is to apply the data types on this particular query. So the home tab, transform tab, detect data type, and we can now go to the home tab, close and load the data, and the data gets loaded. Now, if you go back to the folder and add one more file to that particular folder, so I'll say Control-C, Control-V, I'll just duplicate the same file, come back to my Excel right here, right-click and refresh, the number of rows should just get duplicated, and all should just work fine. And now I have 62 rows of data. That is awesome.